All right, we're recording. I'm so excited. So we have Cindy Tanner, and um, I was uh, I was uh, looking behind you. It's like, oh, what books does she have? Because it, I think as readers, we tend to gravitate. <clears throat> I even find when I go to somebody's house for the first time, if they have a bookcase, that's it's terrible. But I sometimes judge people by the books they keep on the bookcase. <laughs> Don't you have great books on your bookcase. Well, I have a lot of amazing books, but I need another shelf. I'm like, I'm stacked <laughs> too deep in most places. And I've even gone through and, you know, some, I'm, I'm bad with hoarding books. Like I'll have two or three copies because if it's a new cover, if it's a hardback, a paperback, I, I collect books. There could be worse things. <laughs> That's true. I, I keep all my favorites. I have switched a lot to eBooks just because I have such an enormous amount of books that I like to read. I'm even rereading some stuff, you know, it's like, um, I, I would never have my whole house would be nothing but bookshelves. Currently I'm in a room in which the entire room is typewriters pretty much but um I was looking over your shoulder at that the old-fashioned typewriter and I uh, well I I hate to make it jiggle but I'm gonna just turn it around so you can see some of the uh typewriters I've got 70 typewriters but um so that leads me into the first question so we're we're all sequestered and um it makes me wonder what people are doing. Are you, are you developing new hobbies? Are you just kind of extending the hobbies you have? Do you have a special pet project you're up to? I am published in contemporary and I have been world building because I'm hoping to start at the end of next year publishing in paranormal. So I've been using this extra downtime to try to world build better because I don't know that the, the fun thing about being a writer is getting to create. So new hobbies no i have been taking better care of the yard so <laughs> i think it's probably like that but i yeah i haven't developed any new hobbies yet <laughs> so do you have any guilty pleasures like are you binge watching or binge reading anything specific well i have been rereading um the novice series by melanie jane it her the newest one is coming out soon and i i love shifters um, I've been trying to read books that I, that have been on my like TBR forever, but that list is too long. It's never going to get finished. And I'm trying to decide if I need to watch the tiger, the tiger King. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, girl. I watched it because everybody said, have you yeah. seen, and I wanted to be part of the conversation. It's like a train wreck. You can't look away from. And then you, then you have to keep reminding yourself that it's true this stuff really happened. It's, there's no other word. There is no crazy like Tiger King crazy. It's definitely, once you start watching it, it is, it's hard to turn away. You keep thinking, oh, it can't get worse. Oh, okay. Well, that's as bad. Oh, <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. It's so bad. <laughs> weekend to do this is, yeah, I, I want to say I'm, fairly boring. I've been trying to write and, and read. I've been reading a lot and trying out a lot of new to me authors. I always think that's the fun thing is discovering. Yes. yes. Well, um, I can, I know that Tammy Lund does shifter books. Mm -hmm. So you said you like shifter books. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've not read Lisa Kessler, her stuff is very unique. Like she's got this other uh, immortal pirates Mm -hmm. in modern day and uh the pirate savannah and savannah something like that and then she has another one that uses um their muses so it's kind of this mythology with muses in modern day very different stuff and i i can i can easily recommend her there's you know there's always the tried and true you know jd robb christine finn jr ward Nalini, so, you know, I could go on, you know, show Walter, if you like paranormal, you know, those are all good ones. Actually, most of, most of them have like their own little section. I'm probably blocking the, the oh. <laughs> bookshelf. <laughs> oh, that's why we're such good friends. <laughs> we're all, we're reading the same books. <laughs> uh, 
an author had posted about what's one genre that you've never read and it really got me to thinking and the only genre that I think that I haven't read is Amish romance and not because I have anything against it is I didn't even know it existed until last year so I, I looked some up and I put it on my on my list to read because I'm always you know looking for something new yeah so. yeah Amish romance has been really big it was huge um I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I, I, I personally saw just this huge influx of, of Amish romances. I think people like that simple and lifestyle, you yeah, know? We, I really do. I, I have a five-year-old, so he's just now starting to get more independent, and I'm starting to get a little bit more freedom. I feel like I've been living under a rock, even with technology and everything that's changed in the last five years, so I'm trying to catch up. Maybe that's how I should dedicate more of my free time now. <laughs> well, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the best and worst part of being sequestered? Best and worst. Well, I'm an introvert. So the best part is getting to stay home and not having to worry about a bra or pants, <laughs> or just, just not having any obligations. The worst part is probably missing the people that I can't see, especially my mom. I live in the country, but I'm literally a half a mile away from her. She's in a high risk group. So I just don't, don't get to visit. And that, that's pretty rough. That is rough. Yeah. And that really is. Yeah. I saw one of your posts up on Facebook where you, I think it was the day before yesterday, maybe you said, you said you'd really dressed up and you put on your good bra. And it's like, Oh, I'm not the only one. Oh, I, you warranted I put on the good bra for you today too. Oh, how nice! Well, I, I found the pen I got. Oh, yeah, yeah, from Lori, Lori Foster's yeah. event, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I told my husband today, I said, look, I'm, uh, you know, I, I've got these videos that I have to do, of course, at home. I said, you gotta wear pants. I'm sorry, do not walk, because you just don't know. Somebody's a little late, and maybe we're going a little later. So, yeah, it's like, today is a pants day, Ed. <laughs> I was actually reading tips because this is my first foray into a Zoom interview. And one, that was one of the things is to warn everyone in your household to you know, wear pants and not walk around. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what's happened. Well, I saw, and you can, you can Google this. Um, I think I saw it on Yahoo News. Anyhow, I think it was a CNN reporter. She was doing a live, something live in her bathroom, maybe with makeup or talking about yeah, whatever. Yeah didn't realize that the door to the other part of the bathroom was open and her husband was in the shower and you could see him. <laughs> totally true, go Google it. That's hilarious. And I thought about that as like, oh, I'm not in the bathroom, but I should tell Ed to put some pants on just to be safe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pants definitely overrated. That's, it's, it's gonna be hard to have to put on real pants. That's why I made myself do it the other days, practice. Practice, practice yeah. putting on the pants. You know, that's going to be, I'll tell you what's terrible. I, um, I was talking to Lisa Kessler the other day and she and I, we are not good cooks. We're horrible cooks. And I told her, you know, you can tell how desperate times are because I cook and they actually eat it. They eat it. That's, that's crazy. Anyhow, so we were trying to get people to give us recipes and then I felt challenged. It's like, oh man, I got to do something to make Lisa Kessler jealous. So let me show you what I did. I did this. I baked bread. Ooh. I actually baked the bread. I wish we had smell a vision because this is like so amazing. Anyhow, so that's my challenge to, to Lisa Kessler and anybody else out there who thinks that they can't cook. Um, I'm, I'm learning to cook a little bit. Have you had to learn anything during the sequester? No, I, you're I lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, growing up in the country, it's been easier because it's nothing for us, you know, once or twice a year to lose power for a couple of days. If we get bad storms, we might be out a week. So I've always kind of keep extra things on hand. The toilet paper shortage, don't even get me started. That one, that one was new. I don't know if anyone was really prepared <laughs> for that. But. I don't know why they picked toilet paper to have to hoard. Yeah. So that was, yeah. Now it's uh, hair coloring. People are hoard hoarding hair I, color. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So now um, tell
tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up and where people can find you online? Well, I do have a website and that's cindytanner.com. Put a little plug in for myself. My books are all in KU or well, my debut book is in KU. Book two is going to release. It's set for June 10th and I've got I'm working on final edits now than to go to the proofreader. I was hoping to get it out a little, little sooner just as a treat. I know I've made readers wait for it. And then I've got book three is already in its revision and getting ready to go off to its edits. Wow. And those are contemporary romance. Yeah, I, I was one of the writers that I thought once I pulled the gun and think I got publishing, then I was just going to be able to like churn out right away. I forgot that I have a kid and a husband who's somewhat like a man child in itself and that life tends to get in the way before I knew it two years now, ago. And, yeah. <laughs> when you were mine, which is uh, the book that you have out now, mm -hmm. are the other books going to be contemporary romance like that? Yes. Book two is mine for now, which follows ran. And honestly, when you were mine was supposed to be a standalone, but people loved ran so much. They wanted him to have his own book. So giving him, you know, his book and then book three follows the, the friend. They, in book one, Rand Harper and Nona are all, they're all roommates living together. So I decided they could each get their own story and have their own, you know, happy ever after. Everyone deserves that. Yes, everyone deserves that. Now tell me, um, for readers out there, you know, everybody's always looking for uh, new books and new authors. Um, tell me two or three authors that you could highly recommend to readers. Melanie Jane would definitely be one. So I absolutely love her. Oh my gosh, picking authors that I love. So, I mean, like you're <laughs> picking a favorite child, which would right. be I only have one. Um, I'm I'm totally drawing a blank now because uh, <laughs> I really like if you like slow burn, I really love um, Mariana Zapata. Her Wall of Love, Hague and Me is one of my go-to rereads if I'm in a book rut, even though it's like a fairly large book. And it was the first time I've read a slow burn. So worth it. Um, I love Lori Foster. She knows how to make, write A really awesome, the alpha, the alpha guy. And oh, I love her. You know that I'm a fan of your Adam Frankenstein shorts and the graphic <laughs> novel. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, we, we actually met at Lori Foster's event. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm worried that we're not going to have the event this year. I know. Thank you. And I'm so sad because honestly, of all the events I go to, and I've done this since you know 2001, Lori Foster's is by far my my most favorite event to go to. It's not too big, but you you meet you meet people like in a more personable way, and I really love that. Oh, my dogs may start sounding the alarm. <laughs> that, must, that must be our cue. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. This was really fun. The time just went by so fast. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And I will be in touch soon. I'll look forward to it.